tell me, uh, I know this is your first film as a, as a, as a director. How, how much your great experience as a DP brought you where you are here? The film is very, very delicate, very de delicious visually too. Um, well, as I wanted to make this film, as I started to think about the story, uh, I definitely also wanted to have a story that I can use the skills and the love of the cinema that I, you know, the style of the cinema, like cinema verite. And so that was kind of a combination of using years of experience working in documentaries, you know, holding camera on my shoulder and being free and loose and being able to blur, you know, the, the fiction and nonfiction and kind of put it together in a way that um, I would tell a story that felt really real and really honest. And so, yeah, it was, um, it was definitely something, uh, it was definitely a film that I wanted to direct, but also to be able to also be as a DP and also be able to operate the camera. How much is a, is a show me what you got a tribute to love, to love without limits in a way? It's all about that. <laughs> it really is. Uh, it's, um, I really wanted to tell a story about a woman who uh, was strong and, uh, you know, just free to follow her desire and love, the, you know, and be passionate about it. But the interesting uh, part of this is also the, you know, the two protagonists, the, the two men who you know, also fall in love and, and with each other and with this whole unity. And, um, and it's not about, you know, um, it's, it's the, the way this can work only is where everybody's, uh, everybody's free to love a, another person, where everybody's comfortable with another person, that it's okay for all three of them. And this is where this kind of unity works really in a beautiful way. I think it's very beautiful because there's a, like a moment in which one of the characters says, uh, we're becoming one. Mm. That was amazing for me. It was a very definitive moment. It's true, they're, they're individuals, but they're also one. Right. It's richer than if you're a monogamous with only one person in your life, I think. Now I, wanna, I want threesomes all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Emotional threesomes and sexual threesomes. <laughs> But it's also so much more than that. I think in uh, you know today's society we talk so much about the threesome and it goes like menage a trois, you know, kind of thing. But um, what what this really uh, uh, story and I hope it, it translates that way is so much more than that. It's about building your own family. It's uh, that family unit, and you know myself uh, being an immigrant, and I really. Uh, most of my friends who are also immigrants, I find something um, that we all have in common, and it is that not having extended family in the United States that we bond together and we have this like, you know, friendship Thanksgivings and Christmas or, and that's where this kind of different family unit kind of comes to mind also where, um, people find a way to break social norms and find what works for them. And, um, and that is where, um, where this, um, this story comes through is that, that they, it wasn't just about the sexual thing, it's really about building your own family and your, your own um, home unity and love and support. And that's what, that's what I was hoping that uh, this was more than, more, more than just sex, although, <laughs> you know. No, no, I didn't, um, mean, uh, I didn't mean it like that. I meant it like, <laughs> how beautiful to be in love like that. And I didn't mean it like it. No, 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 I, I, I got it. <laughs> well, more an emotional friendship and beautiful and there's sex too, but uh, that's nice yeah. too. Oh, good. And also about acceptance. You know, in, in today's world, we, uh, we really have come along so far where we can really be able to love whoever we want, you know. And um, I wanted with this film to kind of push another, another bar that we don't talk as much, which it is, you know, uh, polyamory and people who choose to have more than one partner. Yeah, uh, for me, uh, 
LA is a character in the movie, loved it. I, you, I know the locations that made me, like you shot in the standard, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> and I know the room and everything. So I felt like one of the characters, I don't know. Like, <laughs> they're very- uh, that, was, so, that was a very deliberate choice because uh, when I first was coming to LA, like I would always say in standard and then I realized a lot of Europeans all would stay at Standard Hotel too. You know, it's kind of like a little film hub. So I was just thinking, you know, Marcello, who is a son of a, you know, an actor, he came to LA. Of course he would stay at Standard. Like I really kind of wanted to, <laughs> to be that of hotel course. for authenticity. But uh, do you think the, the, I think that the characters change a lot. Like from LA, they, into Italy, they evolve and they, they find who they are in a way in Italy. Do you agree with that? And if you can explain, I think that in LA, they're, they're more like searching, like many people in Los Angeles and Italy represents more like the, you know, when you are settling, you're stronger, you're, you are more mature, you know what you want. Maybe that's a symbolism for Europe and America, I don't know. Yeah. Um, it, again, I was um, really exploring um, something that probably I deal with as, you know, I go back home. Um, my family lives in Croatia now. But um, when I go back, you know, I encounter uh, the family, the tradition, the culture, and it all kind of starts coming back, uh, coming back, you know, you know, ways that, you know, kind of push it away for a while and then it all seeps in. And uh, it, it takes me actually off balance. But I felt like for these characters as they went for Marcello, he, he encountering his parents and tradition and family and future all of a sudden become a, more prominent and something of, for him to understand that this is probably where his life is. And the same time for Nassim and uh, Christine, that it's not. And, um, and that they wanted to do other, other things in life. So definitely uh, dealing with facing your life and your family and tradition and how it affected different, all of them in a different way. As a filmmaker, do you think the pandemic I think there's a silver line in the, the pandemic when it comes to independent filmmakers like you because uh, Hollywood is not open to these big blockbusters. So consumers have more time to penetrate, I mean, to, to see things that are really interesting, character driven. Do you think the pandemic had a positive impact in filmmakers like you? More access. I don't know. Yeah, I think it's different for, for different people. Um, you know, we just started our festival run and we premiered in Caramina and we started hitting festivals and getting awards and it was just like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. And then, you know, everything stopped. And I feel incredibly fortunate that I experienced with the film um, these festivals, you know, in, in a physical way and being able to go to theater and talk to people and see it on the big screen and other filmmakers have not gotten that chance and I in some way feel really lucky that I got that part and now uh, with the virtual cinema um, you know we again I feel fortunate because uh, we are having a distributor which is level forward uh, which is also an activist um, you know driven distributor um, we're going to be releasing this in a virtual way on the Valentine's Day weekend. And um, it, it, I feel like, yes, maybe there's a chance that now more people will see the film. And I hope that that's the, the case. I personally am watching more independent films that, you know, otherwise I felt like I would not have gotten as, as much opportunity. I also love seeing on different platforms. It was like, wow, like, you know, look at all these films that before they would have just been lost, but you know, we, we have a bigger presence. So, you know, it's, that is probably a silver lining to, um, to films that are already being made during pandemic. But you know, independent filmmakers are always gonna find a way. 
uh, they always gonna find a way to make a movie. They always go, they always have something to say, and you know, um, either putting a camera on your shoulder and going around, you know, city and self isolating and being in this. They, they're gonna find a way, or being inside the living room by themselves. They're always gonna be a story, and that's that's really where, so, where it's all about. Lana, talking to you, I feel that we see you in the three characters, a little of you in everyone. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, the having camera on my shoulder was part of that thing where I um, really was part of that intimacy and um, uh, and always in a cro close proximity. And many times I wouldn't even hand off my camera to my camera assistant. I would just kind of like, you know, push it aside. We talk. We would be always close to each other, you know, make adjustments, discuss things, and then I would just kind of get it back on the shoulder and uh, and continue filming. The hard time was when I had to get these really big wide shots and had to go <laughs> really far away. <laughs> but um, uh, yeah, there was a, there was a, a thing that I wanted audience and as a camera to to feel uh, being part of it. And, uh, and I do, I do hear that a lot of people at the end, they say, you know, it's kind of, I either regret some of the things that I haven't done in life, or I really just want to jump into that bed. <laughs> yeah, it's great. I wanted to be in the movie. <laughs> <laughs> Let me ask you uh, one thing. Uh, award season is starting not only in America, but also in Europe. Well, mm -hmm. We're a little late because of the pandemic. Is right. the distributor or the person responsible for marketing doing any award campaign, I think they should. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, well, we, uh, we did uh, apply for uh, Film Independent for the Spirit uh, Awards. Oh, and, yeah, uh, yeah. Um, you know, this film is made in French New Wave style and like John Casavetti style where you bring your friends and your people and, you know, you, you have a story to tell and you get together and you make it. So. Um, yes, we we have applied for that and qualified, and also for uh, Golden Globes for our foreign language film uh, category because we are uh, over fifty percent in a foreign language. Yeah, fantastic! That would be nice. My last question: How satisfied are you with the great reception that the film is getting? I read a lot of reviews, not a lot, but in uh, they is very well received. And also, I'm yeah. excited about the movies. I'm part of it. <laughs> Thank you. Um, the biggest satisfaction really uh, has been so far audience, live audience, and being able to speak to them after. Um, there was a video something of woman uh, in Santa Barbara Film Festival that ran out after our actress and held her hand. And she, you know, she said, um, I regret a lot of things in my life I haven't done, but uh, I even even though I'm at this age, I, I really want to go and change things in my life and live it to the fullest. And uh, you know the fragility of life and opportunities and things that we do, and that really is the message that uh, I wanted people to walk away uh, from the film and feel like you know life life is just too short and if you know love is important and love is what makes the world go around so like you know don't hold it back you know love 